One chapter ends, but another begins. There will be a lot of changes for the El Paso Rhinos come this fall, but thankfully one thing that won't change is that there will be hockey at the El Paso County Event Center. Rhinos head coach and team owner Corey Herman joins us next. I'm Duke Keith, and this is El Paso Town Square. All right, and welcome everybody to this special Facebook Live presentation. Duke Keith along with uh, El Paso Rhinos head coach Corey Herman. And uh, very happy to have Hermie with us because we've got a very large uh, and very special announcement uh, as uh, the El Paso Rhinos are moving beginning this next season to the North American Hockey League 3, North American 3 Hockey League, uh, where they will face off with uh, familiar foes in the Oklahoma City Blazers along with a host of teams throughout Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia in the South Division, and then, beginning in 2021-22, move on to the North American Hockey League. That is Tier 2 Junior Hockey, the only certified Tier 2 league, and a move back to USA Hockey and Hermie, First of all, congratulations to you. I know it's been a long time coming uh, and something uh, you've been working on, but uh, to be able to unveil it, uh, especially as the Western States uh, Hockey League has, has announced that they're going to be shuttering for this upcoming season, just trying to get their ducks in a row, um, El Paso Rhinos Hockey will be on the ice this fall. Yeah, we're very, you know, very, very excited. And, and uh, you know, it's been Ever since we kind of um, started, you know, junior hockey in El Paso, one of our biggest goals was always to be a part of the North American Hockey League. The way, you know, their brand, their professionalism, the level of play, everything, you know, we've always wanted to kind of, it's been our dream to, to basically um, be a part of that. And, uh, you know, we've been really seriously talking about it for probably about four or five years, probably really serious about it, you know, the last two years. And when we went on that 37-game sellout streak that's when we really thought like man like you know we could be ready to do this and you know and then this season we're like you know what i think we're ready and let's let's start let, let, let's do this this season uh, this you know this uh, uh, this season this past season and um you know so we uh um you know we, we worked uh, we worked hard at it and, you know um and uh you know it, it was a big day today to get uh to get announced and you know, to be under that North American Hockey League umbrella and be under USA Hockey again. And, and, um, and just, you know, the, the, the step up even from the Western States to the North American 3 is a step up. And we're very excited about next season being able to have that North American 3 Hockey League team. And then, you know, two seasons or, you know, the following season to bring in the North American Hockey League where, you know, those, guys, those players are the cream of the crop. Like those guys are, you know, NCAA, NCAA Division One players you know nhl draft picks you know there's guys that have played in the north american league they're now playing in you know the the nhl and you know just just to be able to create kind of our own like mini farm system in el paso to where you know two not this season but two seasons we have two teams playing and it's kind of like if you can kind of compare it to like major league baseball and triple a like i know that's a different but it, in hockey wise it's kind of the same where under your same roof you can have pros like prospects come and play on your NA3 team, North American 3 Hockey League team, and maybe they only need like three months, six months, or maybe a season to develop to make that North American. Well, they're right under your same roof, so they're training. They know our training. They know our practice. You know, maybe, you know, throughout the season, we have them practice with the North American League, three or North American League team just to kind of get a feel for the speed and the different level. You know, so to be able to do this and put this all together is huge for our program, but you know, more importantly, like, like you know, I, I, I told our staff, like, this morning, like, we wouldn't have been able to do this if we didn't have the staff that we did. Like, all the people that do the stuff behind the scenes. Like, I'm talking, you know, yourself. Like, you're one of the best play-by-play -play guys. Like, we have, like, we have, like, we've, we've always wanted to be the best. You know, like, from the best off-ice officials, you know, to the best this, the best that. You know, and, and we've always wanted to kind of have that and to kind of build this, like, infrastructure to where if it wasn't for all that, we wouldn't have been able to make this move, you know. And, and it's just all the little things that, like, you know, like our housing families. If we didn't have such a great group of housing families, we wouldn't have been able to do this. You know, just every everybody kind of, you know, pulls the rope and, and you know, and it's, it all kind of comes together. And then that's why you can make this move. Well, let me ask you uh, specifically about 
the North American Hockey League, obviously the NA3, is Tier 3. That is uh, one of two sponsored leagues under the USA Hockey umbrella to which you will return. Uh, you've been gone for roughly a decade through uh, United Hockey Union and all of that. So in and of itself, returning to USA Hockey is kind of where the action is in junior hockey. But, but talk about the level of play first for the NA3 and then for the NAHL, which is Tier 2, where, you know, it's not it's not pay to play, so to speak. You're bringing in guys who are legit prospects for the NCAA, legit prospects uh, after they usually are done with their ho college hockey careers uh, for the National Hockey League. It is a huge step up, is it not? Oh, yeah, it's it's a massive step up. And even even the step up from from the Western from the league that we played in before to the North to the NA, to North American Three Hockey League next season, that is that is a step up as well. You know, and and you know, being under that USA Hockey umbrella, it also, you know, like, you know, all our youth programs are under USA Hockey. You know, it kind of puts everything under USA Hockey, and and USA Hockey is like, you know, that's who you kind of want to be under, you know, with junior hockey, with youth hockey, with everything, and um, you know, it, it's just it's it's a really really exciting, you know, um, it's a really exciting day for you know for for us and for everybody, you know, like. You know, I'm extremely proud of everybody that has, you know, our whole program, you know, like, because if we didn't have such a great program, like through the fans and through everybody, you know, like I said before, we just wouldn't have been able to do this. Well, it's uh, it is it is a big deal. And I think that that's what fans should be excited about seeing uh, beginning the season with the NA3 uh, and then moving on to uh, uh, the North American Hockey League this next season. Once again, that was the announcement this morning that the El Paso Rhinos We'll be playing hockey this fall. Now, obviously, uh, being, first of all, as we, we kind of uh, are speaking remotely, um, this is, uh, we're still dealing with a pandemic. And I know that you guys have to deal with that too, as does every sports league around the country, if not the world. Um, what can fans look forward to? Uh, will they be able to, uh, right now, as the North American Three uh, gets ready to play, are they looking to have fans come into the stands? Uh, I mean, what is the situation? Is it does it vary rink by rink and state by state? Well, everything that we've heard is that we can start our training camps in September at the beginning of September. Um, like they haven't really, you know. I guess it's it's kind of like you know. I guess we'll hear more maybe at the end of June. We'll hear more like in the beginning of July or end of July. But like we have to abide by like all the rules of the city and the state and different things like that. But we have been told that we can start our, our training camps and like our players will report they're scheduled to report September 9th through 12th. Oh, okay. So, right. You're, you're ready to go. And, uh, as the fans kind of return and, and, and hopefully things kind of die down a little bit, uh, it, it has to help that, uh, kind of the further away from this we get, maybe the better the situation is going to be for pretty much everybody. Um, and, and that's, that's got to help a little bit as you make this move. Right. And, you know, like, um, like the North American three, you know, it, it, it is a little, it, it is a step above the Western States league. And, you know, we're, we're very, you know, we've been running the, our team now for you know 14 years and to make that move, we can kind of transition into that a lot easier. And that's why that team is starting in September. Now the North American hockey league. Now that's, that's a totally different um, a totally different team to where it, it will take us a whole year to recruit our team. You know, we start, we can start signing players to like a, a letter of intent, which they call like a tender. We can start signing those players in November, but then the North American hockey league has a big draft at the end of May and the beginning of June. So you can draft players now kind of like, just like the NHL draft, but the re like we wouldn't be able to, to do a North American hockey league team come this season. So we need the basically the good, the good, I think it's 16 months or 17 months, whatever it is, to set that team up. Like, you know, um, you know, like I was telling somebody today, like we need to make sure that we, you know, get a good group of, like we've already started to form like a good group of scouts, like a good group of recruiters to kind of help us because right now everybody knows the best players in the United States. Everybody knows who they are. But it, now it's our job. Now you've got to kind of try and find, maybe there's a, a, a kid playing in, you know, S Seattle high school hockey that nobody's really seen, but we have a scout there watching them. You know what I mean? And, and now you really have to get kind of creative when you're scouting. But that's why the North American Three Hockey League is so important is because, 
you know, maybe there's a player that's really, really good at 17 or 16. And, you know, maybe, maybe he just needs another year. Well, we, we bring him in under the North American three hockey league and he, he's under our program. He's protected by us. And we're just, we're basically developing him for next season. You know, that's why it's so important to, to have two teams in two years, in not this season, but next season. And, and talk about that a little bit. How many teams in the North American Hockey League also have an NA3 team uh, to accompany them? Um, there's a couple. Um, there's not, like, I think, I'm not sure exactly how many, but Fort Worth, the Fort Worth Brahmas have one. They have a North American team and a North American 3 team, and they do an exceptional job with both those teams. They've won a North American three hockey league championship and they've won a North American hockey league championship. And they do a great job of having that farm, that kind of that farm system in their rink. They do a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a team that we'll be watching to see how they do everything, you know, and, and, and another, another thing too, with starting that team, you know, kind of next season, is to make sure, like, you know, maybe this like this season will go to different cities and, and, you know, to see how they run their teams. and Because this is a, this is a huge step up for us. It's exciting, and we're, we're super excited, and I think it's going to be a, a challenge. You know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, that we, we have all, you know, everything ready to go come, you know, next September. And, and talk a little bit about the El Paso Rhinos in the community. I know that... Um... Uh, one of the hallmarks of Rhinos Hockey has been how you've been out in the city of El Paso, through the county of El Paso, into southern New Mexico, working with your sponsors, things like that. This is a little bit uncommon, at least uh, through the Western States Hockey League level. Might be a little more so something that, that you, you would expect maybe players to be a little more familiar with in the, in the North American League, but I think you guys take it to a whole other level, don't you? Well, and I think... I think, too, like, we are so fortunate. Like, I tell everybody all the time, we are so fortunate of our fan base and the fans that we have. Like, our biggest recruiting, our biggest asset in recruiting is our, is our fans. Every single player you talk to, they know about the sellout crowds, the fans. You know, they know, they see all the videos. You know, and that's one thing that, that all players want to play in front of is, you know, sold-out crowds. And I really think that those sold-out crowds come from being involved in the community. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Tyler does a great job of, of, you know, getting into schools and having our skate mates program and, you know, doing different charity events and different things. And I think honestly that it, we have to even do more, you know, even starting this season, we're going to do more. We want to be out in the community even more because honestly, like if we're getting that, if, if we're getting the fan support, if we're getting the support from our fans, I, I really, we truly believe that we should be supporting our fans, like supporting our fans at, you know, like a, a charity walk or a golf tournament or, you know, schools, different things like that. You know, like we, we partner up with the, the El Paso Sports Commission, and this has been going on ever since day one of the Rhinos, where we offer, with the El Paso Sports Commission, we offer a free field trip to the, to the arena for any school, any school in the El Paso County. And we call it Science on Ice. So basically, the, ki the kids all come. There's a little, you know, 15 to 20 minute kind of like a tutorial about how, you know, how we make ice, how the Zamboni works, like what, a, how a puck is, you know, like how skates work, you know, like there's a lot of things, like a lot of people don't even know that the ice is actually painted, like the ice isn't, normal ice isn't white, it's clear, you know, so you'd see the sand below, but the kids get to kind of understand how, you know, ice is made and especially ice is how ice is made in the desert. And that, that program has been one of our best programs. You know, and we've been doing it with the Sports Commission ever since, I remember, ever since day one of the Rhinos, we've been doing that. And, and, you know, like a lot of kids don't get the opportunity. And after the little seminar, they get to skate with the, the Rhino players for like an hour, hour and a half. And a lot of kids don't get, like being in El Paso, like a lot of kids don't know we even have an ice rink or ever get the chance to, you know, ice skate or even, you know, have snow. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just a really cool thing. But, but this year we, we were really get the community serve the community involvement even more like we want to get out in the community even more you know and then come next september we're basically going to have two teams that are going to be able to even get into the community even more you know and to help out with you know with with schools or, or help out you know with different things like that but we're, we're we're excited and we're you know that's one thing that we've always really wanted to do was to be really involved in our community because we just want to give thanks back to all the fans that come and support us i think uh 
watching hockey for many, many years. Of course, I started in uh, 97, 98 with uh, your pal and, and general manager, Corey Heon. That was, that was kind of my rookie season, well into my 30s. So I finally got there. But I noticed that <laughs> the, the rink was gray underneath. You talk about painting the rink. They're at the El Paso County Coliseum. It was gray underneath for a lo for the longest time. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, and it's funny. You guys, speaking of some of the off-ice officials, you don't have a company come in and paint the rink every year. It's you. It's Tom. It's the Martinez brothers. It's Keith Peel. It's all of the off-ice guys who've been there for 20 years, working from the El Paso Buzzards to the El Paso Rhinos, all pitching in to put up the rink every year, correct? Right. And, and, and you know, that that's what kind of like you know kind of makes a program is all the people that you don't really see like all the off-ice officials well if we didn't have all those great off-ice officials we probably wouldn't be able to do this you know it's like the housing families it's like yourself it's like you know all the different volunteers we have you know like all the all the people that that help us through this and you kind of you know and, and they're kind of the people that make everything kind of work you know and and to be able to kind of do something like this and it's it's uh yeah, it's it's awesome, and we're super super excited, and and uh, you know it's it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be like a big time challenge. It's like we're you know it's like we're starting all over again, but you know we're super excited. It's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a great challenge, but you know um, we want to we want to we want to win a championship. That's for sure. Well, and that's that's the other part of it. It's it's winning hockey. That's what the Rhinos are known for. Obviously, from the Thorn Cup, um, we're going to have to get used to a couple of different cup names. Uh, kind of talk us through the NA3 and, and some of the teams you'll be playing, one of which we know we're all familiar with, the Oklahoma City Junior Blazers, who announced their move to the NA3 uh, earlier. But uh, just kind of walk us through uh, what everybody's playing for, at least beginning next year. Well, you know, we're, we're playing for the, the Fraser Cup and, and um, you know, next year. And, and uh, um, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, there's teams in Dallas, you know, Atlanta, uh, College Station, you know, Oklahoma City, uh, Louisiana, um, you know, those will be the teams that will be in our division this year. And, and uh, it'll be different. It'll be cool for the fans to see, like, other programs and other teams. And, you know, just a whole different kind of, you know, just, it's just a whole new experience for everybody, including us. You know, we haven't been in a, a part of USA Hockey for, you know, 10, 12 years, or 10, probably 10 years now. You know, but what's funny is, you know, a lot of people that when they heard the announcement, they kind of start doing their research. And all of a sudden, they, they come across the North American Hockey League. And they're like, okay, you guys are going to be playing in there next September. And I was like, yeah. And he said, and they said, man, you know, like, and you guys will be playing in the South Division? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, man, man, it reminds me a lot of, like, the old buzzer days. Like, you know, you got Albuquerque, you got Odessa, you got Amarillo, you got Fort Worth, you got Corpus Christi, you got Shreveport. So it's like, it's like back in the, you know, you rewind back in, like, whatever, you know, 1997, 1998, where it's, yep. like, back to the old buzzer days where, you know, you kind of get all those rivalries going again. And, you know, and, and, and the North American League is kind of a little bit different with the way they, how they play their games, where it's only two games a weekend, where, but you can do like home and home. So maybe, you know, maybe we go up to Albuquerque, take a fan bus, play there Friday, and all of a sudden they come back Saturday with a fan bus and play us Saturday. You know, so you can kind of do a lot of cool different things, you know. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be fun. It will be. And, and it, just to know, I've, I've, I've noticed some of the teams that are in this, uh, that kind of division – of the NAHL, again, beginning in 2021-2022, for that season, after you move to the NA3, you start up the NA team, and yeah, it's the Odessa Jackalopes, it's uh, the New Mexico Scorpions, of course, those aren't the names, I think the Jacks are still the same, right? Well, the, the, the Jackalopes, yeah, the Jackalopes are the same, Shreveport Mudbugs and the Corpus Christi Icers are the same. Amarillo is different, and uh, uh, um, Albuquerque are different, but yeah, it's the, but it's the same old rivalries, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's like, you know, it's like the band's back together. That's, that's going to be cool. And I think uh, a lot of Rhinos fans who were Buzzards fans originally are going to have an awful lot of fun. And then the NA3, too. Um, I mean, as you do both teams, obviously, you're going to need more staff, <laughs> I would imagine. You're probably going to need a couple of assistant coaches. How's it all going to work? Is, is Tom going to continue to coach UTEP? Or, I mean, uh, how's Brother Tom going to fit into all of this? Well, t Tom, Tom's going to move into like this season. He's going to kind of, you know, kind of get him more involved with the, the, the North America three hockey league team. And then come the next season, he'll be, he'll be coaching the NA three team. But, you know, a, fam a familiar face is back in town. Vinny Bone, who used to be my assistant coach is back. 
he's going to be helping me this year. That's and great. then, then him and I'll be coaching the North American league teams. So it's, uh, you know, like we're, you know, that that's like the whole thing of, you know, like uh, a, a great staff. Like we have one of the, like we have the best staff, like that's always been a thing. And everybody does their part and everybody does it really, really well. And, you know, a lot, and, and a lot of, like we work a lot of hours, like, you know, like a lot of teams are like, man, you know, you guys do a great job of this, great job of that, and you have this, and, but they don't really see like how many hours our staff puts in, like from everybody, you know what I mean? Like, and everybody, you know, from our bus driver, Troy, like the amount of hours he puts in taking care of our bus and bus driving and stuff like that. Like, you know, we just got a, a great, a great, great staff. That's for sure. And we do. And another thing too is, is, you know, like, Hockey's not the most important, or not, I wouldn't say the most important, but it's not the most popular sport in El Paso. You know, you have baseball, you have football, you have soccer, you know, all those three sports are the best. Like, I would say, you know, I would say even hockey's not as popular as volleyball or even tennis. But, but like, in order for us to, to basically cultivate fans and to cult cultivate, like, little hockey players, you know, we have to get out in the community and, and go to schools. So, when those Rhino players go to those schools, you know, they're handing them tickets and they're handing them public skating passes. But that's how they get familiar with, oh, man, there's a hockey team here. And, oh, you guys are the Rhinos. I want to come watch you guys play. You know, and then maybe they come watch us play. And maybe then they come, then they get to skate after with the fans, you know, because that, that skating with the fans is probably one of the biggest, best promotions we've ever done. So all of a sudden they skate with the fans. And then when they're skating with the fans, then, you know, the little boy or girl might say, mom, I want to come, mom and dad, I want to come to public skating. Then they come public skating. Then when they're at public skating, maybe they want to have their birthday party there. Then when they have their birthday party there, then they want to start either figure skating or youth hockey or try hockey for free or, or learn to skate, you know? So that's how you kind of have to, you have to be really unique in, in the way you kind of market hockey. And also, and I think the biggest thing is the community, the community outreach. I would agree with you. I think uh, the, the way that you guys have done it for the years of Rhino hockey, not everybody, not every hockey player wants to be a part of that. And if you can't hang, well, uh, you kind of move along. And I know that, you know, the, the NHL on NBC, when they came to El Paso and did such a wonderful job explaining what Rhino's hockey was before the exhibition with Team Mexico, uh, the junior exhibition to start this 2019-2020 uh, season, and then loved you guys so much they came back. Uh, it seemed to me that that really kind of kicked things off and, and brought everything home. I know you've been working for this for a very long time, working to get to this level. And uh, I, I just, I feel really good for you, Corey, because, you know, before your brothers came, before everybody was here, you were the one starting it off in the Greater Texas Hockey League. I remember being with my buddy Michael Hissom, calling a couple of games at the El Paso County Coliseum. And uh, from turning the rink into the rink from an equestrian center in 2006 to now. I mean, even that journey has been 15 years in the making. Um, but Rhino's hockey has actually existed longer than that. Um, I, I just, I can't, I, I can't feel any better for you right now. This is, what a, what a payoff. No, it, it is. And, you know, and even like the El Paso Sports Commission believing in us, you know, to, to, to believe in us to be able to, to have a hockey program, you know. Like there's so many things like the El Paso Sports Commission to believe in us to, to even try and do this, to transform the, transform the event center into a hockey rink, to, you know, to everybody. And it's just, you know, and, and you know, it's, 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 it's a really big group of people that have put this all together. You know, like it, it's been, you know, it's been like a ton of people, you know, like a lot of people, that, you know, people, some people have never met, you know, like, so it's, it's been a really, you know, it's, it's been a great day. You know, it's been like, it's, we're super excited and it was a big announcement and this is something we've been dreaming about for years, you know, and, uh, and finally, you know, we took that jump and, you know, we got a lot of work ahead of us and it's going to be super challenging and, you know, but, you know, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun and work hard and get after it. Well, that much we know, uh, the work starts now and well, the work's already started actually. Again, Corey Herman, the head coach of the El Paso Rhinos with us and with you uh, to make that announcement that the El Paso Rhinos will be playing hockey this fall. Uh, the camps will start in September, uh, depending on what other, you know, state and local guidelines are going on in terms of health. But expect a full 47-game season, I believe, in the NA3 beginning this year as they compete for the Fraser Cup 
in the North American Hockey League or North American Three Hockey League before moving on to the North American Hockey League in 2021, 2022. A whole different level of hockey is coming to El Paso. There are guys who have played in the NHL who've gone on to the NHL after their college hockey careers and uh, literally thousands of NA guys have uh, gotten college scholarships uh, to go play hockey at Division I campuses uh, and schools and programs all across the United States and, and of course, elsewhere. Uh, Corey, congratulations again. Congratulations to uh, Corey Heon, your brother Tom, uh, Shay, Eve, all of, the, uh, all of the fine folks who, you know, are behind Ty, the scenes. And Ty, Tyler, Tyler. Absolutely, Tyler. Tyler Deloach has uh, done a great, great job in, in setting you guys up to this point and, uh, and continues to do all of that behind-the-scenes video work. When you, when you see the rhino's head flipping over on the big screens, that's, that's Tyler along with my, my buddy uh, Miguel Mendez and company who kind of put all of that together. Just so many, too many people to name, and I know I'm going to drop somebody out, but uh, again, congratulations to you. I hope you and Shay and the Bear are well, and uh, thanks for spending some time with us today. And then thank you, Duke, too, you know, for all the stuff you do for us, you know, and Keith and all those guys. You know, it's been, it's, it's been a great day, that's for sure. Absolutely. Corey Herman with us and with you. Thanks, Coach, and best of luck. Sounds good, Duker. Thanks for having me. Our thanks to Rhino's head coach and team owner Corey Herman for joining us this week. Lots of changes in store, but very much looking forward to seeing what the next iteration of El Paso Rhino's hockey looks like. We'll find out soon enough. This has been El Paso Town Square. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Duke Keith. So long, everybody. <laughs>